Welcome gamers to this week's episode of Last Call Gaming. We're on episode 39. My name is Craig Prowless and the man that always pays a coin to his witcher, Andrew Montemayor. Uh, so, had how many months to finish the show and I'm on episode 7? Uh, 6? Then you're almost done. You're on 6? I think you're only on 3. I think it'll probably be another 2 months before I finish that show. No, just jam it out. Take it's, a night off of PUBG and you'll be done. Uh, it's like a good steak. You have one like once a month. <laughs> Yeah, but you finish it. <laughs> Witcher is not something I leave in my refrigerator for two days and feed to the dogs when I can't eat it anymore. So, with that being said, we like to drink beers around here, guys. And on this one is sticking to the nice uh, citrusy, fruity beers we've been drinking. This was recommended by Miss Sweet Deandra. And I'm sorry, Casey, because I know you wanted us to drink Arrogant Bastards, and we will get around to that, I promise. But Didn't you tell me that beer tastes like shit, and it I does should buy like it the shit. other day? There's a whole story. So we actually do drink the Arrogant Bastards. I will tell you my Flagstaff story with it. But this is a tasty Blue Moon Mango Wheat. This sits at, I believe, a 5.4. Never heard of it, but it's really good, actually. You never heard of Mango Wheat, or you've never heard of Blue Moon? Blue Moon Mango Wheat. Okay. Yeah, I, was asking, I don't know if it's seasonal, and I'm sure a beer connoisseur out there will go yes or no, but I'm liking it. What do you think? I, I love it. I actually think I like this more than the mango carts that we had. The mango carts are pretty good, but Those I think this good. is better. What do you think? More body? More flavor? I don't know, but there's maybe it's because this is out of bottle too and those carts come out of yeah. a can. My brother bottle goes a long way. That Hooch's has mango cart on draft out in Fort Mojave, so I think I'm not trying one of those. All right. So, guys, you need to go pick it up because what I didn't tell you is what I'm going to start doing is throughout the show... I'm going to sprinkle, go grab a beer and drink with us. I'm going to start doing drinks for the audience, whether it be a 5, a 10, a 2, a f- whatever. So when you start seeing these clips pop up, it'll be a picture of me or you drinking, and it'll say drink 10. I want the audience to play along at home. That way they're a little more engaged. And if you want to be in on it, send me Last Call Gaming uh, or Last Call Production at gmail.com. Send a picture of you drinking. I'll add you into the show, and that'll be... Uh, a theme. So what do you think? Thoughts? Oh, that, that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, that way anyone like Gino sitting at home doing nothing with his beer, at least now we can drink with it. Dante, who's been begging to do something with the show, now you can uh, interact. So hey, Our guest to you. Deandra, thoughts? I like it. Nice. You'll be the first one to play along. So, guys, let's move into the stories. And the first one on our list is the... Xbox is doing a beautiful uh, strategy that they're calling the smart delivery. Essentially what this is is that Microsoft is allowing all first party studio games that once you buy it on, let's say the Xbox One, it will actually be a free upgrade carrying over to, I'm just calling it the Series X for now on. I'm not calling it Xbox One Series X or just the Xbox. So I just, I've just been calling it the X and I call it the One X, the One X. The I like one the X, X but I'm not calling it the Xbox and that's what they're kind of dubbing this thing. I don't want to call it. Let's not get into the manicures and names and stuff. So what they're doing is they're allowing these games to be um, up for free. And it's a really cool concept, especially when you look at the fact that Microsoft just purchased 13 new studios. And if all of these are going to be free upgrades, it kind of entices anyone that buys this big catalog of games on their Xbox One that when they finally jump ship to the Series X, they're going to have all these games that they can still play. Now, if anyone's unfamiliar with some of the bigger games that Microsoft Studios does first party, you've got 343 Industries, which does Halo Infinite, Obsidian Entertainment, which is just did Outer Worlds, The Coalition, which does all the Gears of War, Ninja Theory, which did Hellblade, and, uh, you know, so they got these big, big titles. We forgot about Rare, Sea of Thieves, Turn, I mean, I I say, it's I'm, turn I mean, 10. Who there's so many good on. games that they're already doing this. Um, so before we get into the third party, how do you like Smart Delivery? Because we were kind of having a conversation about that earlier. What are your thoughts on I think it's pretty it's cool. Working? I mean, it's consumer friendly, so I absolutely don't see why not. I think that's very good of them. I think if anything, this more puts the ball into Sony's court that they would have to say something. Otherwise, they kind of look bad like, hey, buy this game, but then you're going to have to buy it again for PS5. And this is almost akin, except for better than when at the start of this console, I think in 2013, GameStop had like a program to where if you bought a game, like let's say Battlefield, you could come back when the one launched and they had a guarantee. It was for certain games. I don't know if Battlefield was one of them. I can't remember. But uh, they would give you a guaranteed $50 credit. So pretty much you're just paying $10 to upgrade, except for free, the way that it should be. You know, anything that's more consumer friendly, why not? Yeah, because essentially what they're doing, because PS5 is going to be, their whole thing is, 
you know, backwards compatibility. So if you do have a game on the PS4, you play it in the PS5, it can play it. What Xbox is doing a step further, and maybe Sony will jump on, is they're up it free. You know, they're going to be able to do this. So that way you can get all the specs and benefits out of it. Um, but one of the questions I have to kind of bring up is, are they just going to take it on the nose where, I mean, this is going to dip in software sales. I mean, when you saw when they were selling games like um, Assassin's Creed and it, there was a copy on the 360 and the, a copy on Xbox One, I mean, you're getting that revenue twice, essentially. I mean, it's, do you think they really care that they're losing out on a software? I mean, essentially, they're losing out on another six dollar game that could have been purchased. I think it's more they can Good afford. Faith. Yeah, more that they can afford it to buy back that market mind share. Yeah, that's really what, I'm is what too. it is. I love because it. realistically, too, if you look at it, I don't know if they have any big games throughout the rest of the year. None that I can name off the top of my head. So what are you? They're not really losing by saying, "Oh, you can have our old first party games now be up res to whatever the X is." Whereas PlayStation would be losing sales on The Last of Us 2 and whatever The Last of Us 2 would be for the PlayStation 5. Same with Ghost of Tsushima, which is going to launch, which should launch before the PS5. So those are two big first party games. I don't know any big Xbox first party games that are coming out this year that they would really lose sales on by saying anything. And so it's just like, hey, it's all of our old back catalog because they don't really have anything coming out that we know of yet. I almost look at it as almost kind of being like, this way, so anyone that was on the fence about, you know, I'm not going to get an Xbox Series X yet, and I'm not going to buy this game because I'd rather get it on the Series X, it's almost going to make those people now buy the game because now they get a free up res. I mean, I think it almost, it's it's very sneaky in the fact that I think it's going to make people buy a game that normally wouldn't because they didn't think they could have gotten it on the Series X. I think that is a point too because there are a lot of people that, oh, I don't want to buy that game yet because what, I'll, I'll play it on the X or whatever. Now you can get it. And then just play it again later on, too. Or there's the same... I mean, you have the assurance that... Um, oh, well, I, I didn't mean to cut you off now. Oh, no, you're now fine, I'm getting you're ahead that if you purchase a game, it is going to be available on the X2. So you can buy something on the X and then it be you know already there for you because you purchased it on the one. Do you think it's... I mean, we're seeing a lot of this kind of rollover with like the Game Pass onto the PC. I'm not... Would, do you think we'd ever see something like that on a PC level where you could buy... A game, or, or is that even possible? I think it'd just be the same amount of games, whatever's on console versus whatever, but I don't think you're going to get, like, Play Inc. or, like, you know, whatever stuff and, like that. And at that point, wouldn't it have to be only digital? But then again, if they are doing something like that, I don't know if they would do it like, oh, hey, you buy it here, but you can get it anywhere versus why not just put it in the Game Pass where it's already everywhere. Yeah, there you go. So the main reason we're bringing up the, the smart delivery and, and what they're doing with that is because outside of just the first party studios, the big news, the big tweet, you'll see it right now pop up, is that um, third parties are starting to get on board with this. And the first big one of note is Cyberpunk 2077. They jumped right onto it, which was really cool. Yeah, they had a very nice tweet saying, you know, nobody should have to buy the same game twice, which... Um, you know, was a big thing when the 360 was to the Xbox One, from the PS3 to the PS4, you know, buying dual copies of games. So they're the biggest one of note coming out and doing that. And that will be um, a free update once there is the Xbox One, or the Series X update. But other companies like Ubisoft are, are you know, on board to do it. But the, the option to do this with your game is open to every developer. The only thing is that, and, and I agree with this, is not every third party developer should be doing this. I don't think this is the way to do it with every game. I like that it's a Microsoft specific and a few good big third party titles. Um, I can say going the other way because I mean, what if I were to buy? I can't think of like Resident Evil Three. Why can't I get the whatever version? You know that game comes out next month. What if I want to go back and play it on the X? I got to buy it again. Well, micro like we were saying though, Microsoft can take that hit. Capcom doesn't want to lose two versions of a game. Ubisoft doesn't want to lose two versions of a game they could have potentially sold. Microsoft could afford it, I think. I don't see why a third-party game would want to lose revenue on well, that. Why if, would you want to miss out on, on an extra copy if game? Pro if the CD Projekt could take the hit, I think Capcom, especially with, with the one Capcom game, with one, could yeah, do the, it. <laughs> the Capcom. But it is one game. and Because Ubisoft was rumored to be on board with this, I believe with a Rainbow Six title. You know, Because I was looking at it going, it'd be awesome to do that with an Assassin's Creed, but... 
that game's going to sell. Why would they do that? Why would you miss out on the game that's guaranteed to print money? Right. So um, it's an interesting thing. Do you see any other big titles down the line that you think would, would do something like this? Or is CD Projekt Red just trying to put as much lights on this game as they can to move it? I think we're going to hear a lot of other people that will. But I think it's going to be coming down to, like, there's going to be a lot of people who are catching flack for not. But it is understandable for, I guess, why you wouldn't want to. It's not like you do have to. It's going to be a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of thing later on down the road. Because either, A, your company is going to take the hit, or you're going to catch the social flack for not being aboard the train of, like, you know, let's give you whatever. Well, I mean, I, I see your point, but I at the same time, I don't think they're going to take that big of a hit, you know, being not on board with it because again the smart delivery the smart delivery the smart delivery was originally just designed for first party games so right. the concept that even a third party is willing to do it i think is kind of cool and, and the fact that we're starting with a game this anticipated is kind of cool yeah i think it's pretty cool if anything too i don't even know if i'll play that game launch day i might actually just buy it just to kind of show support because i think it looks really good and it is something i want to play and maybe just wait till the x to play it yeah, I, but we'll, uh, then again, we don't have a launch date, so we don't know how close it's going to be. So yeah. either way, so you guys look more into it. I'll, I'll see if I can leave a link or two um, uh, describing more of what the smart delivery does. It's a really cool concept, and I think it's moving in the right direction. Microsoft is really kind of—I don't want to say pioneering in um, you know this kind of like ingenuity, but they're in these innovative things, but. They're really doing a lot. I mean, Game Pass across, you know, P that to PC, smart delivery now, they're cloud-based. I mean, I really like where Microsoft is heading, and I think the Series X is going to be a really nice system moving forward. Definitely a breath of fresh air, because they're really on the offense right now, and pretty much you have just radio silence from Sony. So Yeah, so leave in the comments, guys. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you think more games, more parties, third-party games should be doing it, and which games you would you like to see involved in it. So... Moving forward, unless there's anything else you want to add. No, I'm done with that. So we, guys, as you know, we'll get into it at the end of this, are giving away Resident Evil 3. But the other day, a big, what, 12-minute new gameplay launch of Resident Evil 3. And we got to talk about it, especially if we're giving away a copy today. So, Andrew, I'll let you lead off with that. Walk me through what was seen and how you liked it. So, unfortunately, we're not big enough, and I would love to be someday. But yeah, a lot Give of us a copy. A lot of outlets were able to actually go and play the game, and they're able to put out snippets of it, and most of them range to about like 13 minutes of it, and it shows off a lot of the game, more than what we've seen. There's um, a, a lot more of the city that you're seeing. It almost looks like you can go, because that was the big thing, is the city before was like kind of a lot of almost just long hallways. There's some buildings you can go into, whereas, excuse me, oh, I'm stuck. <laughs> With this one, it seemed like you could go in and out of a lot more of the buildings because she's like going into like a donut shop, cutting through alleyways, and that's kind of the bigger thing is three, I would feel, was a little more action-oriented than what two was on the old one. That I, going back and playing it, I don't know if it's as survival horror as it should be where when I'm watching this, it really still felt survival horror, even though... They added, like, a new dodge mechanic where if you do it just right, it slows down time so that way you can get, like, the perfect shot or juke out, you know, whatever enemy may be attacking you. There's other points where you're going to shoot a zombie in an alleyway and there's another jagged part of the alleyway and someone just comes stumbling out. There's people behind you that you're just cornered, like, no matter what. So it really kind of gives you that open city feel but claustrophobic because of how many zombies and different things there are that are there and that's actually something that i really really wanted to see because i wanted to see hopefully what we see more of because it didn't show too much of it but they did show that there are survivors that carlos is like hoarding down in the train and they're trying to get these people away is that in the original one you kind of do see like a few people but i want to see the initial outbreak kind of a lead up to it because it wasn't like just 40,000 people were instantly infected like that. I mean, even though it was over the course of a day or two, I want to see the gradual downfall of whatever. Right. Um, I, yeah. So I'm watching this from my perspective. I'm seeing it like, like I'm just kind of saying, you know, it, it is kind of out in this city, but what I'm liking is unlike a Resident Evil 2, which is kind of just set in this box that you can move around through all these, these, you know, doors and, and rooms. It, like he's saying, you can never really navigate from room. I mean, there's more than one way it looks like to get from A to B, and the fact that, do I go this way, and there's a zombie sitting behind, because when watching the gameplay, when that guy just pops up behind that dumpster, I was like, oh shit, yeah. because what if she went 
that way. And the fact that they, um, the gameplay looks smooth. Andrew was pointed this out to me. That it was transitioning pretty seamlessly from uh, cutscene into, yeah, it's into a, actual live yeah. gameplay. And I was like, wow, that looks very, very good. Yeah, beautiful game. And I don't remember Resident Evil 2 doing it like that. I think there might have been... I don't remember if there's a cutaway or if it went straight to the game, but they say it'll literally go from like them talking to whatever to just you're in control yeah, kind of panning out, and, and it's just it's... absolutely like seamless. I'm like, oh man, that lo- it looks absolutely great. Yeah, the game looks good, um, and I want to get more into how uh, the actual nemesis looks. Is everyone was saying, and you've I, you I know, didn't like him at two. first, but after seeing him now, I think he's absolutely. Well, they were great. saying how number two is going to be a pushover compared to this, and after watching it, and here's just my take of it. Andrew can dive more into it. Is when he's chasing you, Andrew was kind of pointing out these things. He's now got this tendril that can grab you. So even if you're an arm's throw away, he's still pulling you in. He's got this jump mechanic that he can get right in front of you. So it looks like when when he's doing like you know the the Jason chase, it's more terrifying than it's ever been. But it looks like when you finally do those battles, like the actual boss fight, his aim is still dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets blasted like twice in the like who, with the grenade. Who knows what difficulty shuffle. that was? Yeah, on, it's almost though. like he's just looking at you, blasting this thing. So, uh, but but when you're looking at the boss fight, right? Uh, the fire looks good. The surroundings look good. So this game is shaping up to look beautiful, and it looks even more deadlier and scarier than I think maybe number two was. I think they kept one of my favorite things. So in uh, two remake, one of the worst situations you'd be in is that Mister X shows up. But there's a zombie, there's a lick around. And it's the same concept here. Mr. X could corner you in something. Or there's even a fight where you're trying to get, a, you know, attack him. He's attacking you with the flames or you're trying to get away. But there's like four different zombies that are on fire and still trying to attack you as you're trying to get past them. And like Craig was saying, he can do this jump thing where he gets in front of you. So Perfect. either you could try to juke past him and keep running or maybe try and go back the other way and see if he'll either chase you or get away. But you're also turning around towards, that's the thing. Do I kill this zombie? Try and run past it, but he can cut me off. Or if I didn't kill that zombie, now I gotta turn around. He's behind me. The zombie's there. And I'm in the same situation I was in in the first place that was hard enough to get around. So either way, it's an absolutely beautiful game. And it really shows to me that they kept the heart of what Resident Evil was about. And that's something that they did with Resident Evil 2. That's something that I'm actually excited for Final Fantasy VII Remake for is that they kept the heart of it. Because they aren't afraid to make changes, i.e., Again, when you're going down underground, I think before in the original, which I, I only played once, I think it's like a subway that you're trying to turn on. Now it's a train, not a big difference, but they are there before. There weren't other survivors that Carlos was trying to get down there. They weren't actually really getting a whole lot of people. They also ended up changing some enemies too. They showed off the drain demos, which looked really good and has this new thing where it will grab you from the top and it shoves like a thing down your throat and puts like an egg in you that if you don't heal in time or get this thing in time it'll like burst out of you and there's also it they're called the hunter gammas in the original but it almost they just look like low polygon like frog people almost kind of like the hunters except for not as scary where now it's this like weird like frog fish looking thing fucking and it's (laughs) it's huge and it takes up the whole thing you can't run past it and I didn't even know how she's supposed to stop it because I'm watching her shoot it. And then once it's close enough, again, it has that classic, you know, like some enemies do, that one hit kill. That thing was pretty terrifying. I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck you're supposed to do right yeah, there. how do you get by that thing? It, it took up the whole goddamn hallway. And so I love what liberties they are taking. And again, I'm just absolutely excited. This is my most excited game for this year. Nice. So that is looking good. So guys, make sure you check it out because the more we see this game, the more it looks fantastic one thing that caught my eye and I, I think i had to ask you so correct me if i'm wrong if there's a trailer that shows it They're, they haven't shown any of the menu specs they haven't shown what happens when you pick up a new weapon or pick up herbs and kind of store it around do you think they're not showing it because maybe they're implementing something different from the original kind of grid backpack system or do you think it's going to be one and the same i can't say so actually i forgot to write it down now that you mention it so <laughs> i'm I, a mentioner i'm a mentioner i think it will be like the system from the original but they, I, I was reading in someone else's preview, so like, let's say you have handgun ammo. In two, even if you have handgun ammo, well, <laughs> handgun ammo, you still have to decide where it goes. It doesn't just like stack instantly. Whereas this, because it's in a hurry, if you have handgun ammo, and you can run by and hit the button, and your person will just pick it up. There's no inventory involved. It just goes right to where your handgun slot is. Okay. So if it's something that is stackable that you're already carrying, it will just pile it on versus... 
you have the classic push A. It shows you the item. Push A, yes. And now it stacks onto your thing where it'll just do it seamlessly. And I was like, oh, you know what? That's actually really cool, especially for when you are being chased and you're just trying to grab shit because you don't want to stop, break up the flow of the fight, and then try to run again or you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, keep the continuity and the flow going. Um, Are these blue moons hitting you with some burps? I am. I don't think them, I've yeah. seen you this burpee since since episode one. Dude, they're getting me right now. Oh, this is a this is a mid show break pause. How far are you? Uh, cruising along. Yeah, near six four. But uh, since I already beat two, I want to know if two's on your list. If you're gonna try and beat it before three, I would like to. I know my list. I'm I'm playing Life is Strange. I'm almost done with that. I'm on the fourth uh, chapter out of five. Um, I do want to beat Call of Duty because I know it's a smaller game. But if you think I should squeeze in. Resident Evil. Before I think you could beat because I, I, I am I playing at the same before. time uh, Dark Souls Genesis, but I'm only playing that with Gino when we're both online. So after I beat Life is Strange, which is probably another couple hours, I'll have room to do another game. So. I'd recommend doing it before the big game comes out. I mean, why not? Yeah, I might as well, right? I might as well put my uh, my money where my talk is. So anything else you want to jump in on Resident Evil Three before we jump into Riffers? No, I got nothing else. Okay, well then let's rip it up. You so, want me to start? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and start it off. So my first one is actually just going to be something small, and you could look it up, but it's just that Phil Spencer went out, and they were talking about the Series X as far as the specs. They didn't really, they kind of talked about specs before, but never anything solid, and there's been lots of leaks that it is going to be a 12 teraflop console, which if you don't know what that Woo! means, that is the new measurement. And they have breakdowns of pictures, so like the, for example, the Xbox One X right now is 6 teraflops, so that's already double the capacity for what it could do. The PS4 Pro in that aspect is a 4.2 teraflop machine. So, either way, that, yeah, they also have other breakdowns that you can see, like, how many Xbox 360s and stuff like that it is. I think I someone even like compared chart, it to, yeah. like, Super I'll Nintendo that is that what it was. It up, yeah. But, um, that is along the lines of what a past leak had been said. And what that leak also said was that the PS5 was looking at 9.2 teraflops. So again, I wonder if maybe because Xbox, again, is being so aggressive, we're talking about everything, they're that sure that they have the lead. We haven't really heard anything from PlayStation. They could just come out, but they have the lead. There's no reason for them to, you know, why not? They can come out and... I think that might be something they would avoid, you know, especially if that comes out to be true. You'll stop hearing about, oh, it's this much stronger, this much stronger. You're going to hear it from Xbox the same way PlayStation was shoving it down throats. But also cool. the other big thing that they were talking about is that all previous games from all previous consoles will be backwards compatible. So the 360 games that are on the list, the original Xbox games, and of course all Xbox One games will play on the Series X. So that's always good to see them bring that forward. Yeah, 12, 12 teraflops. 12 teraflops of processing power is fucking ridiculous and it's and and we would be talking more of sony specs it's just and they and they've announced some things so it's not like we're not we're, we're glossing over it it's just they're not announcing everything like xbox is kind of coming out more to the forefront of showing what their system is going to do because you can tell this is the i i think the first one that they're like properly proud of and willing to kind of show off like i mean there's a i mean you can talk shit all the shit you want about that thing but there's a reason why it looks I think like it a looks computer good. tower. I, I actually I mean, personally like the yeah, way it looks. Yeah, it's getting yeah. bigger because they're, they're doing what they started with. They build fucking badass computers. So why not make the Xbox as powerful as it can be? And Jesus, man, 12 teraflops of processing power. And here's the thing. If we ever get a next system, it's going to dwarf this one. So, I mean, we're... It's crazy to think that this is where we're at, and it could only literally go up from here. I think that's what's even crazier to see. Is so, and when you think about it too, is this is Phil Spencer's first console because he picked up the one <sighs> after Don Matrick arguably fucked everything up. Like I can, I, you know, when it was all well, TV, 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 names of them, and the one wasn't great. It was kind of a okay console. I would honestly kind of say like I kind of prefer my. There's all kinds of third party, and I love that, but I can't attribute that to Xbox. That I enjoyed my GameCube more than I really enjoyed kind of this console to really pass. That this has me more excited for the future going forward. I'm definitely looking forward to it. So, um, right around the corner. Can't That's wait. all for me. Hopefully. Nice. Uh, yeah, it, it's ridiculous to think about. If I can find that picture, I'm, I've either thrown it up or I'll throw it up by now. So, uh, my next riff, guys, is kind of just. Um, echoing what we talked about last week again I don't want to like dive too much into like coronavirus type things but we were kind of picking on Sony saying hey what are they doing is it just them that keeps backing out of these things and it's really not because speaking of everybody Cyberpunk came 2077, right after, yeah. yeah they kind of opened the floodgate and CD Projekt Red was um, one of the biggest ones of note that's dropping out of packs 
for similar reasons, right? The guys that are making Cyberpunk 27, they're not going to be out. But the other big one is Microsoft. Microsoft is actually pulling out of the GDC, which is the Game Developer Conference. So if you listen to what we talked about last week, you kind of saw our thoughts about it, or at least our opinions on which side of the coin you know they're leaning on in terms of why they're not showing up. But more and more of these companies are showing up, which kind of sucks because then what's the point of these events? You know, why would anybody want to even pretend to go to these things if the big like if, if Sony's not going to something and Microsoft's not going to something and CD Projekt Red's not going to something and you know all these guys keep dropping out? Then what's the point of even having them? What are you going to showcase? I think what's even going to be the bigger thing for something like this is that some of those companies did say that they're just going to do like a digital event presser at the same time. So if that garners more views and is easier than going to something like PAX or GDC, then why even bother? Exactly. What's the point? So that's where it could be something that's a little bit dangerous because if this pans out a lot better. But again, I hope for more little events just like the nintendo you know the wrecks that they do throughout the year yeah it sucks because pax is generally considered to be a good place where most people like to go to go you know people will travel to go see because they want to get their hands on stuff um i'm not too familiar with the game developer conference we don't develop games but i can only imagine that future things are just going to be digital there's going to be a digital event that does a you know conference with xbox the conference you know no one has to leave the comfort of their own studio or their own uh you know their building i guess or play mortal kombat with a friend in vietnam <laughs> so i don't know it just it it just is kind of just showing more and more and more of these companies backing out so it's gonna kind of pick the meat off the skeleton of of moving forward with press conferences and events of where we expected studios and news to be at to where this is all kind of like falling on its face to where we're not getting that anymore so now literally the next thing is going to be E3 and what's you know we already know Sony's not going to be there. What else is not going to be there right. pending this? So I don't know, guys. Jump in the comments. Let us know what you think. Uh, more things are falling out on that. Uh, Deandra, question. Epic also fell out. Out of what the the GDC or PAX? GDC. Epic's out of GDC. So there's one more, guys. And I'm sure the list goes on and on and on. Th those were just the big ones because we talked about Sony last time. Now it's Microsoft. We talked about. Um, uh, a couple studios now one of the big ones CD Projekt Red who's trying to put as much light as they can on their game they're pulling out so it's like I don't I don't know it, it's just we live in an odd time and uh, again if it's safety reasons then that comes first if it's not then it just it's kind of a bummer right so moving on guys let's get into are we on to questions questions yes let's do questions so let me pull them up so we got a few, so let's jump right into them. And some of them are quick, some of them are not. So the first one, at least the way I, I wrote them up, was uh, from Connor Malone, old school fan of the show. We appreciate you, Connor. And he was asking, because uh, I, I think he was kind of um, referencing what we were talking about on our last riffs. We were talking about Borderlands 3, and Andrew was talking about the Sonic movie. And he was asking, if um, should we do a top five video game movie special coming soon? Or maybe just your a few of your favorites. Um, Andrew and I do uh, do plan on doing a tops episode. Yeah, of actually, that's something we're throwing games, around so. that will probably that'll be the topic then for the that'll, next one. I th I'm gonna say that's gonna come out next month. We gotta do it next month because I don't think we did anything for this month. So no, we didn't. So the tops five for our other show will be our video game movies, and we will do that next month. Fair, fair, fair. Connor, it's coming next month. The next one comes from. Miss Deandra, and she goes, because we're drinking the mangoes, keep it sweet, go for the blue moon mango. It looks yummy. Question segment. What do you think about the Ring Fit Adventure for the Switch? Also, how would you oh, compare tell you. Yeah, the fitness game for Switch versus the fitness game for the Wii? Now, if you, for those of you who are unfamiliar, we talked about the Ring Fit, um, I think, last year. And it came out in October of 2019. It is the new workout game for the Switch. Now, comparing it to the old Wii workout games, most of those games were all via controller and you move stuff around. So most of them kind of had an athletic ability to, or at least an exercise component to it. The bowling, the batting, that was all kind of it. But they actually had the Switch board where you actually... Balance yourself. You could do kind of like these moves, and you some could of do... that stuff was actually like really tiring. Like it I remember was. doing like I actually did some of the wee ones, like where you're supposed to like run we have like one downstairs like, if you want to do it. You're supposed to like run and keep going. I'm like God, it's dude, just it so was cool. kind of it was a step in the right direction, but a little unpractical in terms of how you would do it. The new one, and maybe I'll get a video of me doing it, or maybe DeAndre doing it, is 
fucking awesome. If you, it's, it's very, um, the, okay. So the ring is what you essentially use to move around and do all the exercises. It's very, um, what's the right word? Elasticy? Uh, no, it's, uh, what would you say? It's, it's very durable. Like when you're pushing this thing in, you would think you would just snap it, but like, dude, you're getting here and you're like, okay. And all the exercises I think are phenomenal. So what they do essentially is they build this kind of narrative where you can play the game and you got to be this monster, but all the whole way to traverse through it is literally jog in place and it straps to your leg. So it gets that and the way you, and then you got to battle monsters. So you actually got to do squats. You actually have to do presses. You actually have to do all these things. So comparing it to that versus the old one, I think it blows it out of the water because the exercises are practical it's actually saying do a squat do a this where the other one was just kind of movement and a few things and in terms of um what was the other part of the question how okay compare it it's just good it, it's 70 bucks or 80 was it 79 and that that got you the game and plus the strap it doesn't take up much space i think if anybody has a switch and you're looking to actually work out do it because one of the kind of bunk things with when you did the wii it was a lot of chicken shit stuff. It was a lot of just move your wrist. And that was, you know, that was the workout or do right. this. You could really kind of uh, cheat the system if you were that lazy. You're not really getting around this. You have to actually put force and movement into it because it censors everything. So if that is something you're interested in, I would say look at it because it does a great job. It tracks your it tracks your progression and there's, there's a lot of short exercises you can do. I would say look into it. And I would like you to try it at some point. Not tonight, but... I would like you to look at it. So hopefully that answers your question. Working out, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, working out or hardly working. Let's see. The next one comes from Auburn Stein. He, again, was mimicking us or echoing us from last episode. Wait, your name's not Mandrew? He probably one. really thought my name was Mandrew. <laughs> <And he> goes, <laughs> Legally. <laughs> I, I did for three years. Would you guys ever consider live streaming the podcast on YouTube and uploading it after? Uh, that's something we've been like looking into and working on, especially with some of our like weird work schedules, and uh, it's something that we definitely want to do. We are going to do. We're trying to do more this year and get into some different things. I was actually just telling him before we started, I think the first thing I want to like live stream of myself playing is going to be Resident Evil 3 when that comes out, because huh, I do... Like there's a problem. Thanks, DeAndro. Uh, <laughs> is uh, I'm guests in the studio. Is horror games, so I'm actually going to be all about that, and I'm looking into it right now yeah um it's it's definitely been one of the things we want to do it's just it's schedule wise it's, it's so hard. i mean it's it's enough to get the show going once a week right i mean that's we have a blast doing it we you know we put a time to do it but to start doing more things like that and get it all figured out that's just the next step so andrew and i have been talking about it this we've been talking about this since last year it will come it's just a matter of when and will it be next month Maybe not. Will Ooh, it be, you're hopefully... You're a little burpy now, too. What's that? You're a little burpy oh, now, dude, too. That mango... Hey, it's, it also has wheat in the name, and wheat always hits me right in the <laughs> bread basket. So, uh, it is coming, and it is something we definitely want to do, and it's just picking, you know, what... Because we don't want to launch it in a bad way, right? We want to pick a good thing, and we just got to find the right idea to soak our teeth into and, and get it going. I can tell you right now, I'll never be one of those people. Hey, it's your boy, once again, back at it. With it's a- your boy, Mandrew! So... It's coming, Abenstein, and uh, just give it time. Give it time. I would say before the six-month mark, we'll, we'll at least attempt something. 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 So, the next question comes from... This might be our most question-filled episode. comes from I'll Give You Mo. And he says, Who would win? Mandrew's favorite Mortal Kombat character versus Craig's favorite Tekken character? Very interesting question, because I had to like kind of think about it. So... I'll do mine first, and Andrew can get into his, and then we'll figure it out. So, my Tekken game, outside of playing one or two back in the day, four was the game I played, and Harong, I believe is how you pronounce his name, was always my favorite guy. Now, if you're comparing that to anybody in the supernatural realms of uh, Mortal of Kombat, because yeah. I'm assuming his favorite character isn't a human, like Liu Kang or Johnny Cage, I would think he would get smoked by anybody, especially like a fucking Shao Kahn. But I also, my second guy would always be like Kazawa. So if you're looking at Kazawa. The demon and, yeah, or the man? Let's go demon. Just so it's, we put him on a, on a power level. Then I'm curious because, so let's put Kazawa the demon versus. I think Scorpion would still win. I'm always a Scorpion, Scorpion fan man, from Mortal Kombat. Love it. 
Love okay. it. I think if you were coming down to a pure like martial arts standpoint, I think Scorpion would lose because it'd have to be someone like Liu Kang or something like that. But he's not my favorite. But I feel <laughs> like he's a lot more oriented to where he can go like this hand to hand. But when it comes to the supernatural like element, unless you're fighting like the bear, or, I think King could take anybody. King, I, I see. I, I always <laughs> like Paul Phoenix too. Uh, Isn't there like a metal Paul Phoenix or something like that? Oh god, I don't know. I never. There's really, so many like weird really ass past. people. There's like a boxing like fucking tree or something like that in like one of the games. So Kazawa essentially is immortal though. Is Scorpion? I think so. At some point. So how do we decide who's the winner? I'll flip this cap. Do you want heads or tails? The Scorpion. Yes. I already flipped it. Do you want heads or tails? Well, I, I didn't what, look. I didn't tails? see. The cap side up or the cap the, side down? Cap side down. The heart, the, the squigglies? The blue moon. Are you watching this? The blue moon is the head. Oh, God. Then it's heads up. So I'll take heads. Is it heads? Tails. You, you, you <laughs> sucking me into it. Okay, so via probability and fate, the, it looks wins. like Scor- Scorpion wins. I hope that was a good enough one. I don't have the voice. It's kind of tickled my throat, though. We can add that to our impressions. <laughs> yeah, is that, a, is that a decent enough one? So I am curious, though, because that is one that um, you can almost echo across the ages. I am curious of what I'll give you Moe's uh, favorite Tekken guy versus his favorite um, Mortal Kombat guy. Someone know what your favorite fighting game is. Yeah, well, give us that answer, you piece of shit. <laughs> so last question comes from old school fan favorite Christian Vargas. And he says, what is one thing you hope to see in the next E3? You want to go first or second? Um... You better go first, because uh, I'm going to need some time alone with my thoughts. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> if I'm cheating, I'm going to say something just unexpected. I want to see a brand new game that I've never seen anything of, nothing about. It's absolutely brand, brand new. Nothing out there about it. But if I have to say something I would expect, something that, you know, whatever, I would actually say Conquer. A Conquer sequel? Bad Fur Day? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Maybe they are twist offs. <laughs> oh. I was wondering too this whole time. I was like, these things don't fucking pop. I guess right. I just didn't know my own strength, you know. Yeah, I've been thinking that this whole time when I was popping around. I was like, these things don't fucking pop. These I scissors thought... aren't cutting. <laughs> these scissors. So you want to conquer? Why? Uh, Why conquer though? Dude, because I love Conquer's Bad Fur Day, and then when they did Conquer's Bad Fur Day Reloaded for the fucking Xbox, it was just one of those games that stuck with me. It's so corny and so out there that it was. It, I don't know. Just everything about it, I absolutely fucking enjoyed. That it's something I've always wanted, like a sequel to. A lot. Um, I'm almost going to take it in the opposite direction. Not so much what I want, it's what I don't want. Um, and as you know, because Andrew and I have talked about this before, I wholeheartedly, honestly believe E3 is on its way out. Do I think it's going to be this year? No. Do I think it's going to be the next three years? No. But it's coming. And what I don't want to happen is, because what they're kind of doing is they're taking this whole marketing thing for E3. They're doing this whole consumer friendly let's showcase live streamers and to some that's golden right but i don't fucking watch twitch i don't watch people just play games and i don't want e3 to turn into that especially on the cusp of two new systems coming out this year i want to see fucking gameplay of new things i want big bombs of big trailers of or big reveals to happen i don't want to see fucking ninja playing whatever fucking game he plays to get famous like i don't want that and from all outlets that are showing like Colin was even speculating on it is that that's where it's going and it's gonna suck because I'm really hoping we can try to get to E3 this year if we don't I just don't want to see it be something that it that it never was that we fell in love with I'll say that's a double-sided coin because the problem with E3 is it's it's not so much for the press anymore it's for everybody to go to and we want to go this year, and we're not just straight press yet. We're everybody. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I got to take – I'll say it again. Got to take a little salt with a little sugar. I don't want to see that stuff, but at the same time, what else is there to watch, I guess? I don't know. I want to see big big trailers, big reveals. I don't want it to be nonsense, which Twitch streaming all day on E3 is nonsense to me. You ready for the uh, contest? <sighs> well, I guess I'm done venting on that one. All right, so we've got everybody's names here. Of course, we've shown you guys how we do it before, where we choose everyone at random. I'll actually let you read these off this time. You I think I did it last time. Okay, okay. So I'll pop up a picture right now if we have one, showing all the uh, of who's in it. So guys, this is the moment anyone that was trying to win the Resident Evil Three copy has been waiting for. And here we go. So entry one, 
is from episode 34, and that comes from Brandon Truckee. Entry two is from episode 35, and that goes to Zandra Martin. Actually, hand me those. I'll start folding them. Okay. Uh, entry three comes from episode 36, and that comes to Jacob Williams. Entry four is from episode 37, and that comes from Jab Stab. Oh, and a favorite. And entry five comes from episode 38, and that is Casey Court. Well, you can fold that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you said you wanted to. Dander? All right. Who chose last time? You chose last time. Okay, so are you taking camera then? No, you, I did the camera last time. You do the camera this time. Oh, okay. All right, are you recording? Are you doing it wide? Oh, now See? I am. See? That's fine. Oh, God, I dropped one. Uh, well, whoever that was is going to win now. <laughs> That's bad juju. All right, let me back up a little bit. All right, all right. All right, ready? Yeah. Let's see. And the winner is Jab Stab from episode 37. So, whoever that is, congrats. Jab Stab, he's, he's been watching the show. He's got comments on the Jab Stab. We uh, truly appreciate you, man, for still hanging in there with us. And you will get a copy of Resident Evil 3. So, reach out to us at lastcallproductions at gmail.com. That is how Andrew and I will get a hold of you. That is how we will send you via the physical copy or the digital copy. And congrats, man. I'm super happy that yeah, you won. Thank you for everything. And uh, make sure you include your social in that email. Yeah, send your social. Send where you work. <laughs> Give us your address because, uh, you know, we're just trying to take care of you, brother. So, um, guys, that is the winner of the Resident Evil 3 contest. We will come back with more. So, Andrew, is there anything else you want to add to this little ice cream treat? Put a little cherry on this Sunday. Oh, uh, original three. Forgot to mention earlier, we'll actually have a demo. So do yourselves a favor and try that out. <laughs> Everyone that's pissed that they didn't win. Yeah, yeah. Go try the demo because we hey, yeah. For game. all you guys that didn't win, I have a personal thing for you. There's a demo coming out, courtesy on me. Go ahead and download it. <laughs> so guys, until next time, my name is Craig Prowls, and that is Manjo Montsmer. Cheers. I feel like she would... I'll take would, that. I'll take money on that action. I feel like she definitely has, like, that Mike Tyson fucking kid... Oh, like, get you good. I think as long as you can outrun her, her stamina is... No, I'll say it's you and her down in the marrow. So, like, you would have to have... She, you would have, like, a uh, handcuff that goes from, like, here to here. So you, yeah, so you can't <laughs> so you can never be out of arms reach. Yeah. Oh no! She's and she just giving me. you that fucking that big bear paw, and you picked a fucking pear with the wrong paw. <laughs> she, you had a prickly pear. So um, next time, beware. No, nah, yeah, Rosie would probably smash me, especially if we're hooked up via three feet. Do you think you and me could take Conor McGregor? No. And he's drunk. No, he'd leg kick the shit out of us. Yeah, I, all you do is leg kick one of us, and then what are you gonna do? Bo I don't think I could box, take us. Box like, him? I don't think I could take one of those leg Fuck kicks. Fuck that. Or that short you know, like, we don't even know how to check it. You would try to, like, raise your arm and break your fucking forearm. Dude. I don't I can get a perfect check-in and fucking... I watched enough UFC to know to lift my leg oh, two fuck. inches off the floor. Don't be that guy. That reminds me of Nick when he was, like... He was really good at fight oh, night. And he's man. like, you know what? I think I could be a boxer because I'm really good at fight night. I was like, what? <laughs> no. I was like, that doesn't make no sense. This doesn't add up to me. I don't know. I've never seen him in a fight. He looks... I, maybe he's one of those people that can just take a beating. I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> like Charlie? Like, like Rocky Balboa. And who's the toughest guy we know that can take a beating? Char of course it's Charlie. Of course it's Charlie. So. You see that Kingdom Hearts 3 is now $20 at GameStop, and now it's on the Game game Pass? That thing tanked. Yakuza's on the Game Pass now. Yeah, but that was always going to be on the Game Pass. No, I'm just saying it is now. They no. added the other day zero. Who's These playing guys? that? Kingdom Hearts? No, Yakuza. <laughs> a lot of people are. I downloaded really? it, yeah. You down That's, I downloaded it, doesn't mean I'm playing it. It's my next game after Witcher. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. No, it's not. 